Hi friends, I am Danielle. If you are working in a multilingual Salesforce organization, you know that entering translated text or translations for each individual field, a custom label, or pick list value can be quite a time-consuming and tedious task. When we use Salesforce translation files, or STF, we can export, translate, and import back into Salesforce, making all of the translation changes at once. When I was attempting to do this for my first project, I could not find a great resource online. I had to piece together different articles, um, even a video that actually doesn't work. It was a great video, but the steps are incorrect. So this has been a learning process. I hope that this video will help you and you do not spend as much time on this as I did in the beginning. Before we get into the org and into the translation workbench, I would highly encourage you to compile a list of custom labels, field names, pick list values, what have you, that you absolutely need to translate. For my use case, I am only going to be updating about 100 field labels and custom labels. These are going to be used to generate custom PDF documents or files, and I will not be translating everything that is available within the org. I say this because when we export our STF file, it is going to include everything in the organization that is available for translation. This is going to be a lot of data. In my case, again, I'm updating or translating about 100 items out of 10,000 that are going to be in my file. That is excessive. So knowing exactly what you need before being overwhelmed with this file is very important. So let's get into the org. The first thing that you're going to do is make sure that your translation workbench is enabled. If it is not enabled, there will be a button here that you could click to enable. After you have enabled, you will want to set up your supported languages. I am only going to be doing French in this example, but of course you could add additional languages as needed. When you set up the language, you will be assigning translators for the language. I have selected myself. I am the one doing this work. After you set up or enable the translation workbench, we are going to go up to export. This is where we are going to be receiving our file. There are two different options for you, outdated and untranslated and bilingual. Bilingual, we'll start with the latter, is going to be a complete export of everything in the organization, both translated and untranslated. Um, it is going to include two sections of items. So the translated may have been things or items, field labels that you have already translated there. And then beneath that section in the file, you're going to see all of the items that are remaining or the untranslated items. And then the outdated and untranslated, it's kind of like a subset of that bilingual file. It is going to only include the items that have not yet been translated. So you're not going to see any item that you have already translated um, in this file. So if you were doing this for the very first time, you will choose bilingual. I like to do the bilingual regardless just because I like to see what is... Um, what I've already translated, what I need to translate. Um, if there are translations that are in that file that you may need for other field names, custom labels, what have you, again, good to have that bilingual file. So we're going to select bilingual. And then you have export as STF and another button. Apparently there is a known issue um, with the second choice, and I'm not going to work with that anyway. So we are going to export as STF you will see a success message. In your email inbox, there should be a Salesforce email with a link to the exported files. So let's get that now. All right, so I've received the email and it is going to include a link that is going to go to our Salesforce documents. The screen, 
All right, so <clears throat> once you have downloaded this, as you can see, I've done this several times in this sandbox, you will click on the link for that file, and then we are going to click view file to actually download our file. The downloaded file is a compressed zipped folder, um, so now we will need to extract our contents. The file that is downloaded, or the zipped file, it will contain one to several different um, STF files. This is going to be based on the number of supported languages that are set up in the organization. So for me, I only have French um, set up or supported, so I only have one file. I'm going to go ahead and extract, and we are going to go and open that document. After we have extracted the file, we are going to open up this document in Excel. Um, and I have a couple open already, so let me close those. All right, we're going to open up this STF file in Excel. This file that we open is going to be that STF or that Salesforce translation file. We are not going to touch that file at first. This is going to be more of a copy paste activity. I'm going to, you should, I'm not going to do that now just for time's sake, but you should open up the STF file, copy all of the contents, move them into a new Excel sheet. Whether you're sending this to your translator or working within that file to enter those translations, you want to do that in a different space than this STF file. If you mess up the column count, the um, headers, any of the rows of this STF file, especially the key rows and data, you will fail the import process. Um, and it will be quite a task to get the file back to its original state unless you just start all over. So again, download, copy and paste everything from the STF file into a regular um, Excel file and then work with that. You can come back to the SDF later, paste, and then upload to Salesforce. So anyway, to work with this STF file within Excel, I am going to open in a delimited um, file type, and then my file origin, I am going to select UTF-8. Next, make sure that my delimiter is tab and then finish. So here is our bilingual translation file. Again, you will notice that as I begin scrolling down this page, you are going to see a insane amount of data. This is why your list at the beginning of this video is incredibly important. Once you have um, opened this file, this is the bilingual file. So it does include items, field labels, custom labels that I have already translated. So you will notice that section at the top, um, the key, do not touch this column, whatever you do. Um, if you do, it will fail your upload. Um, the label and then the translated text. And then you do have a fourth column out of date. We cannot change the number of these columns, so I'm going to leave them as is. The next step of working with this file is I am going to use the list that I created prior to opening this file, and I am going to search through this Excel file, and I am going to bring all of those custom field names, custom labels, what have you, to the top of my document or my Excel where I can begin entering those translations. I do this because at the end of this, we are going to delete everything or every row following my final translated item. It's easier to upload, less data that you're working with. Um, also, if I were to upload this file as is right back into my Salesforce Force organization, I am going to get an error message, I promise, because there are going to be some 
items that reference null at the very bottom. So even though we exported this and this essentially came directly from the organization, I can't re-upload it. So scrolling back to the top, um, your file should look something similar to this when you're finished. If you are doing this for the very first time, you are going to only have two columns, your key column and your label column. You are going to insert all of your translations into the label column. And I may have one of those open here. I do. Let me pull this one over. It just has a couple of rows, but we can look at it. So there's only two rows or two columns, sorry. Well, two rows and two columns on this specific worksheet. This is all I'm going to have to upload. This is fine and it will work. So again, once you finish with your translations, you are going to upload back into your Salesforce organization. Um, just for clarity, I do want to show you exactly what your file would look like if you're doing this for the first time. So I'm going to pull all of my um, key and translated text and place this under the label of the file that I just showed you. So let me get this one back on the screen. All right, so you will see under my key, all of the items I told you there was about 100 that I was gonna be working with. And then under the label, I've actually put that French translated text. Once I have finished with my translations, again, I delete every row following that last translated text. So I do not have 10,000-ish rows. And this one, I have a hundred or so. You're going to save your file, making sure that it does in fact stay in that STF or that Salesforce translation format. If it doesn't, once we get back into the translation workbench, you will get an error message when you attempt to upload. Don't touch the key column. Keep it in STF format. Leave the column numbers as they are exported and into your translated text as such. All right, let's go back to our Salesforce org. Meant anymore, and now I'm going to go over to import. Export to get the file, work with it, translations, import to insert this file back into our organization. All right, let's hit it. click on import. You're going to get a success message here, but that doesn't mean that your file actually works. So you will receive a email um, from Salesforce again, and this will either be a success message or it will include an error log in the form of a text file. This STF Salesforce translation file is an all or nothing process. If one row out of your worksheet fails, the entire file will fail. So once you receive that email, um, I am going to show you this one because this is a very common error. I've ran into this several times that, that there is a duplicate key in our file. All that this means is that this, um, it's a custom field. I have two of these in my file. So what I'm going to do is go back to my file. I'm going to delete the two rows and then we are going to re-import and try again. All right, so we did have success with that file. You will get an email that reads you have been successful with a file. You get a date and time stamp letting you know that all is well. I do have a few common errors. We went over the duplicate rows because I did receive that one. Um, another common error that you may run into is that there is a maximum character limit for your field labels. So those cannot be greater than 40 characters. 
And then you may run into this one as well, especially if you don't delete all of those rows following your translated items, um, is that flow rich text is in the STF export file. And so are those null items. However, if you don't remove those prior to the import, again, you are going to um, fail your process and you will get error messages that let you know that you have failed. I hope that with the guidance of this video, it does not take you as long as it did me to complete this process and that you are successful upon your first upload.